This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. When you go on the ways, so there are many, many things that the Creator is revealing to you in your journeys. There are many, many experiences that a person is going through in life and when your mind is outside, when you observe and you look on the external world, so you can enjoy the view, you can enjoy the meetings with people, you can see some nice things happening for you in life. But when your heart is aimed to the Creator, when you're holding in faith while traveling, while meeting people, so then you can learn so much more than just swallowing the physical beauty of this world, even though that it's also very inspiring. We took road number one from Los Angeles to San Francisco, uh, close to the beach, we saw the, the amazing sunset along the way, we enjoy the sea and the birds and, and the view is fantastic. And it looks so beautiful, but you stand in front of all of that amazing nature and you don't have anything to do with it. Like, how, what can you take? Another picture, it, 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 it's, it's basically nothing compared to the beauty of the nature. There is nothing that can be done with this beauty. But when you look with eyes of faith, the inspiration walks with you for a very long distance. And those pictures are waking you up to observe and to think about your inner soul that the world is coming to teach you about the greatness of the creation and from that to learn about the greatness of the Creator. That all of the world is only a mirror that is reflecting the inside of a person, the soul of a person. Inside of us there are oceans, large seas and sunrises and sunsets inside of us and many animals and species and birds are flying. Those are the thoughts that we have. We have holy thoughts, those are the holy animals, and we have negative thoughts, bad thoughts, those are the impure animals that are running and, and, and they have their aggressions and their sadnesses and their bitterness. The holy, holy animals, they have their good nature, they're all humble and nice and friendly and innocent. And, and you can learn from the creation about the nature of yourself. So, I'm finding myself very inspired from those points of revealing the depths of our souls. And every person in this universe has got such amazing power. And our power, we must understand, is that blessing and it's that gift that we received from heaven. That the Creator chose us and sent us to that mission to live in this physical world and to find ourselves struggling and dealing with so many obstacles and challenges in life. But He treasured inside of us an endless spring of inspiration, of spiritual power, of inner wisdom that can provide and give us the tools to know how to deal with life. Today you have so many pieces of land that are suffering from drought and hunger and horrible poverty and wars. And also inside of you, there are certain sections inside of you that are suffering from horrible spiritual darkness and hunger and drought and wars inside of you, hating yourself and blaming yourself and revenging yourself and punishing yourself and, and, and doing horrible things to yourself and murdering yourself in certain issues every day, bringing yourself to bad places, going after bad habits, keeping doing things that you know that are damaging you. And for what reason? Why am I doing it? The world is coming to teach you. When the world will move to a place of kindness, of love, of peace, we will understand that nature really contains and hides inside of it the bounty, the ability to water all of the dry places, to illuminate all of the dark places, to heal all of the sick places. The world got that nature inside of it to heal itself, to recover.
The hole in the ozone can disappear and complete itself. The filthy contaminated air can, can just go away to the, to the space and fresh air will replace that air and the nature will heal. Another rain will come and gonna heal the ground and the burned trees and the nature will heal itself. But when will it happen? It will happen when we will work on our own spirits. The world is representing to us is a mirror for us to understand what goes on inside of our own spirits, inside of our own emotional bodies. So on that we need to work. When we're going to heal ourselves, we're going to see that that healing will spread out to the world, will heal the world. First and main work and effort that we should, should focus on is to heal our own spirits, our own minds, to see how to create peace within, peace with our own thoughts, how to accept ourselves with our lackings, with our differences. For that we need faith. For that faith is so important because when you don't have faith, so you can hate every particle of the creation, you can hate the fact that you were born to this world in that family, belong to that nation. Why in that house and not in a different one? Why in that community and not in another? Why with those siblings and not in another family? Why with that nose? Why with those eyes? Why with that color of hair? Why, why, why? All of those questions can bring you to lose your mind because of your lacks, lacking in faith. Because you don't understand that there is a wisdom that is above our understanding. And that's the hand of the Almighty. That He is supervising on His creation. And He created you with your colors, with your skin, with your eyes, with your thoughts, with your childhood, with those parents, with those siblings in that environment. In that school, if it was religion school, religious school, or if it was a, 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 a public school, if you had good friends or if you had bad friends, all of those things that happened to you happened because that the Creator decided to create you in a certain way and to lead you in a certain path that will bring you to a place that in that place you will be able to connect yourself to Him. Every person with a point of truth, when he will look deep inside into his own life experience, going to try to learn from his life experience, he will find out and he will understand that not only the beautiful hours brought him to that place that he's holding today, also the hard hours were assisting you to be more mature and more adult. Also, the difficulties that you went through in life brought you to your humility and to be more sensitive and caring about other people's needs. And very, very important foundations of your life been so stabilized and, and, and perfect, went into your life in such a perfect way because of those dark hours because of hours of despair, because of feelings of, of being lost and, 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 and confused. And those hours turn to, 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 to the good. Suddenly when you look back after the fact on your life and, and, and you try to understand how can it be that I became who that I am today, you understand that the Creator was doing a lot of favors to you also by piling piles on piles of difficulties and many, many challenges, challenges in your life. And those things built you and improved you and made you to be a better person. So of course, we don't want the suffering and we never ask for suffering. But after the fact, when we're looking with mature eyes and checking who I become to be, who Hashem made me to be, I can see that many of the qualities that I'm carrying inside of myself are coming because of those hard hours. Because that I had that inner power to deal with those hard hours, to deal with my sadnesses, and to deal with my fears, and to be able to talk, 
and to express my emotions. If everything was succeeding and running forward for me in life, I would be a different person. For sure that I wouldn't be that person that thought for so many hours and that humbled himself for so many hours and that was able to apologize to his friends or to his soulmate or to raise his children with patience and with love. If everything was succeeding, I would run businesses, I would manage companies, I would go and do things in the world. I would be too busy to think even and to remember that I have a family that I need to take care of, that I have children that I need to be worried about and to try to make sure that they will receive the right education. If life would be so smooth and successful, I'm not sure that it would bring us to the real spiritual success, to the emotional success of to be a person of truth. The only verse that is written twice in Kriyat Shema, that we're mentioning it twice, once after the other in Kriyat Shema, is Hashem Elokechem Emet. When we're completing Kriyat Shema, we're saying Hashem Elokechem Emet. Your God is the God of truth. And then we're repeating those words again. And we're saying Hashem Elokechem Emet. Why are we repeating? Why you repeat something? Because you're scared, you're afraid. Maybe the person you told him that line, he didn't got it. He didn't accept it. He didn't fully understand what you told him. So you're going to repeat it. Listen. Hashem Elokechem but Kiyachma, we're saying it to ourselves. We need to remind ourselves. The main connection that we can have to the Creator will be always based on truth. Hashem's seal is truth. When a person is lying, he cannot connect himself to the Creator. Dover Shekarim, a person that is lying all of the time, cannot stand in front of the Creator. The Creator immediately disappears from his eyes. That person makes up lies and stays surrounded and trapped in his own fantasies and imaginations. And he's blocked and sealed under the coverings that he created with his lies. And then he cannot see Hashem through the lies and those walls and cur curtains, husks that he created with his sins. But when a person is saying the truth, immediately, Karov Hashem lechol korav, the Creator is close to everyone that will call him, to everyone that will call him with truth. Lechol asher ikreu be'emet. So even if you're going to call him with your honest voice, prayers of truth, and you're going to admit that the truth is a very big shame for you, that you're ashamed of yourself, that you feel horrible with your actions, that you're so embarrassed to admit and to say the truth, that you were lying, that you were lazy, that you were doing things behind the back, that you forgot about your faith, that you couldn't care less about the obligations and the Holy Bible, that you neglected so many important things. But if you will say those words and they will come from a point of truth, the Creator will heal you. He will come closer to you and will show you His compassion, His mercy, His kindness. His unconditional love. The meaning of the word mercy and the Creator calls Rahmana, that He is the Father of mercy, that He is the source of mercy and kindness beyond this world. He Himself is revealing to us mercy. The meaning of the word mercy is that He is helping people even if they are not worthy. He loves us. Rachamav al kol ma'asav. His love and His mercy is on all of His creations with no differences, with no dividings. He loves you with no connection to the color of your skin, to your nation, to your eda, to which group, to which section you are connected to. He doesn't have that in His thoughts. He loves you because He created you like that you will love your child. You will love Him. You will desire to be close to Him. You will have an unconditional love to your child because He's your child. That's the nature of the creation. When the mother gives birth to her child, she loves Him. 
She doesn't think, if he will have blue eyes, I'm going to love him. No. You love him because it's your child. And the Creator, He loves us because we are His children. B'nai Elyon Kulchem. You are all children of the One that is above, of the Divine One. We all contain in us Chelek Eloka Mima'al, part of heaven from above. Neshama Elokit, a godly soul inside of us, lives a treasure, a spiritual treasure that He treasured inside of us. What did we need to do is to understand what are those gifts, what are those treasures that He treasured inside of us. What did He give me that I will serve Him with? What are my talents? What are my abilities, my power? What are the gifts that He gave me? They're going to be a person that will have a certain talent to talk, to speak. He will have a fantastic memory he can learn. They're going to be another person that he's ADD. He can't learn. He can't focus. He doesn't know how to learn. He can't understand the language, the Aleph Bet. Hebrew for sure he can't read. What he going to do? Try to sit with him for hours and hours. He can't learn. He can't sit in one place. Immediately he's looking at the window, looking at the watch, feeling that he has shalom, didn't forget his iPhone outside in the car and he's checking that the car is locked. Yes, it's locked. <laughs> Everything is okay. So crazy and losing his mind. Why is he like that? Why one person born look like an angel? Everything looks so smooth for him. Another person needs to struggle and to go through so many difficulties in his life. If you will just understand that you're in a mission, and your mission is to be a good soldier, to be a good son, a good child to your Father in Heaven. Now a good soldier, when his commander is commanding him to do something, he never asks no questions. A good, command, a good soldier is not a general, is not a pilot, is not someone with, with degrees or with a high IQ. A good soldier is a soldier that is keeping the words of his commander. If his commander send him to clean the toilets, he's not thinking twice. He's running to clean the toilets. Like that it's written on Yoshua Binun that he was a young kid and he was holding himself as a young kid. He never hold himself like those wise learners, those amazing geniuses and scholars. He while he was looking at himself, he felt like he was a kid. And as a kid, what I'm going to do? I'm going to fix the tables. I'm going to set the, the seats for every person that will come to have his own seat in the Beit Midrash of Moshe Rabbeinu, his rabbi. He was doing everything he could. He was cleaning, mopping the, the floor and fixing the tables and the benches and putting books on the tables and preparing, and spreading a nice, nice table covering on that Moshe Rabbeinu's table that will look honorable and fit for that rabbi that he was appreciating and admiring so much. Because of that, he was chosen to be the next one to hold that torch of Bible, of Torah, and to give it to the next generation, to lead our nation into the Holy Land, and to open for us the way for our complete redemption, because of his humility, not because he had a high IQ, and not because that he finished Shas before he was 18 or 13, and not because, and not because, just because that he was humble. And also Moshe Rabbeinu been chosen to the same job only because that he was humble. And also the Lubavitcher Rebbe became to be the Lubavitcher Rebbe because that he was holding his father-in-law as someone that he's just his helper. And even after that he passed away, the, 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 the Rav, um, um, it's uh, it's Chak, what? Yosef it's Chak. After that, he passed away. The Lubavitcher Rebbe said all of the time, "I'm just completing my father-in-law's job. I'm just completing his job. I'm just fulfilling his will. I'm just doing what that he commanded me because of his humility, because of his humility." Rabbi Nathan of Breslev, the student of main student of Rabbi Nachman of Breslev, after Rabbi Nachman of Breslev passed away, Rabbi Nathan, his student, couldn't speak. He didn't have power to speak. 
He said, I felt when Rabbi Nachman passed away, like that the sun set in the noontime. Darkness was surrounding him. It took him one year and a half to recover from the death, so-called, of his righteous rabbi, Rabbi Nachman of Breslev. One year and a half. And then, when he woke up, after one year and a half, he said, now I realized that I have a mission in life. I'm going to go and print the, print the books of my Rebbe. I'm going to go and tell his Torah. I'm going to tell the wonders that he... Immediately again, he humbled himself and brought himself to that place of appreciation, holding that torch that we received from our ancestors and going and, and, and illuminating for the next generation without possess it, possession, without taking control, without idolizing ourselves and being important and being called rabbis or whatever, which kind of titles, only understanding that by the merit of our ancestors were alive, by the merit of those warriors and soldiers that were fighting to defend the country and to defend for their families and to protect us in different lifetimes or our grandfathers or great-grandfathers that were fighting and some of them died in the wars and some of them made it out and escaped and saved us from death by the merit of their tears by the merit of their prayers, by the merit of their blood, we are alive today. By the merit, Zohar Chasdeavot, in the beginning of our prayer, we're saying to Hashem, you remember the kindness of our ancestors. What's the difference between us serving Hashem today to our ancestors that were serving Him thousands of years before? What's the difference? That they did everything because of their goodwill, they volunteered. They were not obligated. We are obligated today. Today, maybe the converts can wake us up to understand about the, the ancestors, that they're also volunteering themselves and deciding, taking themselves and pushing themselves into, those, into the arms of Judaism, to be so obligated under thousands and thousands of obligations and Jewish rules out of their good heart, volunteering and saying to Hashem, I want to commit myself to more than you obligated me. You obligated me as a Noahide, as one of the nations, only in seven commandments. And now I feel I want to do more. I want to give more. I want to learn Torah. Students of mine that are non-Jews are calling me and asking, I have a pair of tefillin. I want to put tefillin. Am I allowed to put tefillin? Or if I'm not allowed to put tefillin? I want to keep Shabbat. They're desiring to do those things out of their goodwill, with a passion, with a wishing soul, running toward Hashem. It's so inspiring. And the Creator, He sees that. And also us, Jewish people that are obligated, we must see how to keep the Torah out of love, not out of fear, not because that we're afraid to be punished and to be, who knows, that's such a bent and crooked and twisted method of serving the Creator out of fear. The Father of mercy loves you so much. And you need to connect yourself with ropes of love to Him. Moshchen yacharecha narutza. Pull me that I'm going to run after you. And then, Hevi'ani ha-melech adarav. The King will bring you into His secret rooms, into His private rooms. Going to tell you secrets of Torah. Going to tell you the real intention, the real wisdom, the light of the white fire that is written between the lines, that is written between the lines of the dark fire, the light of our ancestors, the light of our soul that is shining from within. Every one of us got that flame of illuminating bright fire that shines from within. This is the light of your soul. And it's an endless spring of wisdom, but you need to attach yourself to it. You need to believe that the Creator lives inside of you, not only in the ancient books. He lives also in the books. Ruach Elohim merachefet al The Spirit of Hashem hovers above the water, above the water. But you have an inner spring inside. It's not above, it's inside. 
even from the books, when you learn from a book, it will always going to be an aspect of an external learning. You receive the information from outside. When you come to a lecture, even if you sit in front of the most holiest rabbi in the world, the righteous man of the generation, the highest one of them all, when he is speaking to you, there is one aspect of learning from outside, the voice of that holy rabbi that is getting into your ears, the look of that rabbi that is getting through your eyes, but also there is a deeper aspect of learning, learning in pnimiyut, that you need to learn from your inside, to listen to the voice of your soul in a lecture. When you read from a book, some of the verses, some of the lines, some parts of the speech will speak to you more than to others. And also part of that lecture will speak to you more than other parts of that lecture. So you need to listen, to pay attention to what that happens inside of your own soul while you're learning from the books, while you're learning from those righteous ones. You need to listen to the inner flame of holy fire of your eternal soul that is speaking to you in your inner voice from within. This is the channel to connect yourself to the Almighty to the one that is above, to the one that told us Vasuli Mikdash Veshachanti Betocham from the moment that you built that temple, I will live inside of you. Inside of you. Shochen Itam, he lives inside of you. Betoch Ami, inside of my people. Hashem is telling us, inside of you there is a source of life. That source of life is a spark of the Creator that lives inside of you. And no one can control that holy spark. It's in the hand of Hashem. When He will call that spark, there it went. The Creator gave you that spark. This is that lifeline. This is your inner channel to eternal life. You can live forever through that inner channel. But you need to focus your mind, to work on your awareness, to work on your thoughts, to feel the spiritual aspect of your being, to become that spiritual one that you are, to connect yourself to your spirituality and not to live your life as a physical body. Who are you? You are not your body. Who are you? You are your soul. You are a holy soul that is covered with a physical body. And that spiritual soul that you are connected with all of her particles to heaven in a bonding that can never be separated. Yaakov Hevel Nachalato. It's a rope. It's a thick rope that connected from within to the Creator. And even if a person is sinning, and even if a person is crying, and even if a person is violating rules from the Bible, things that are not allowed to be done, horrible things that are not allowed to be mentioned, even if a person sinned all of his life, the tshuva, the way to come back, is waiting for him until the last moment of his life. And he can do tshuva even in the last moment of his life and to come back. To come back where to? To come back to the place that you came from, the world that is above. The Zohar Kadosh is telling us that tshuva is to bring something to the place that you took it from. When you are doing tshuva, when you're coming back to your roots, to your spiritual roots, you're coming back to yourself, to who that you are, to who that you really are, who you really are. You're really a holy soul. You're really a divine soul. So come back to that. Come back to the reality of your being. Come back to be who that you really are in the nature of your creation. Be good. Be gentle. Be nice. People are so sweet. People are so kind. People are so gentle and amazing. I'm meeting thousands of people while I'm traveling in the world. 
I see holy, holy people in front of me, good and gentle and so fragile, also hurt and broken and sad. But doesn't mean that they are bad. They're just too scared because they've been hurt and abused and, 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 and disgraced so many times. So they're ashamed of themselves because they've been criticized so many times on their color and on their accent and on their words and on their jokes and on their noses and on the color of their heads and on their eyes and on their eyebrows. What there is to talk about eyebrows, what there is to talk about noses, what there is to talk about ears. Even I'm hiding my ears all of the time, you see. I'm not even aware to myself. I chose that way to... No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on myself. No one in this world should be ashamed of who that he is. No one. If you're gonna look at yourself, and try to judge yourself like that the Creator is judging you. Let's say, who is the Divine Judge? The Creator. When the Creator is judging a person, He is judging him with Chad Eina Derachame, one eye of mercy. That's how He judged the person. Judge yourself like that. Try. Not with judgments. Not with anger. Don't, do, don't be hard on yourself. Don't criticize and, and, and slaughter yourself. Try to have some understanding, patience with yourself. Ask yourself, open a discussion. Why did I start sinning in the first place? Why was I start doing those horrible things that I did? And walk with yourself. Give yourself a hand and walk step by step. Try to remind yourself of your past, of your youth, the beginning of your life, your childhood. And try to see where really, really, behemet with truth, where it all started. When was my first meeting with sins? Where was my first meeting with lies? Where was my first meeting with all of the darkness that is surrounding me today? And then try to look at your own eyes. Try to stare to your fears in their eyes and deal with the truth. Who were you in that moment of sinning for the first time of your life? If I'm not wrong, the answer of all of us will be the same. A frightened child, a terrified, scared child that was looking for love, that was looking for pleasure, for joy, for satisfaction. Someone very innocent you were when the snake failed you with the first sin. And one sin and one fear took you to the next and the next to the third and the third to the fourth and the fourth to the fifth and on and on and on. But it's all started in a very holy and innocent place. So stop hating yourself. Start looking with eyes of the Creator that He gives His eyes to the righteous ones Enei Hashem la tzaddikim. Tzaddikim, righteous ones, are those ones that are judging everyone favorably. They understand you. They care about you. They understand that it was not easy to grow up in that house, with that family, with your midot, with your fears, with your body, with those friends, in that company, in that area. In those days, after the war, with that kind of poverty, spiritual poverty, who knows? You know, and the Creator, He knows. He understands our inclinations, He knows our fears, He knows your nature. And even though that you're judging yourself, He always keep on loving you and waiting that you will come back to reality, to the truth. Hashem Elokechem Emet. When you're judging yourself and hating yourself, you are cooperating one hand with the evil inclination, 
when the evil snake that was saying bad things on us from the moment of our creation until the last moment he won't stop saying evil things and Lashon Ara and negative things he will say about every single one of us always. Why? Because he's got that evil nature. That's his creation. When you are judging like that yourself, you become to be a tool in His hands to kill holy people and to destroy gentle souls. Don't judge yourself like that. Don't play with the devil. Play with the righteous ones. Go to the positive side. Go to the light. Understand yourself. Heal yourself. Give yourself another chance to do tshuva. To come back to Hashem, to apologize on your mistakes, to admit on your weaknesses. To be a person of truth is not to kill yourself. It's to give yourself an opportunity for life to yourself and to all of those ones that are surrounding you. To give them a hand, to give them a shoulder, to give them support and love and understanding. That's our mission, to represent the Creator, the Creator that we believe in Him. Not that the Creator that someone else described to us and terrified us, oh, He will kill me, oh, He will punish me, oh no, for sure I'm going to be damned on that, oh no, what's going to happen to me next? No, no, that's not the real Creator. This is some evil person imagination that he made that plot that he made that theme that he lied that lie and described the source of good the source of kindness in a negative light in a negative shade and made all of our lives dark and said ruled by fears and anxieties that doesn't really take place in this universe. The Creator is good, but He is tied to our thoughts. The King is tied, Melech Asur Berhetim, to our gentle thoughts. We are leading Him like the, the verse is saying, Tzadik Moshe Lirat Elohim, the righteous one. He is the one that leads the Creator. The Creator is following you. When you go down to Egypt, the Creator goes down with you. When you're coming out of those narrow places to the Promised Land, the Creator is walking with you. He is with you. You, lives inside your heart, inside your mind, illuminating your life, giving you your heart desires. He answers your prayers always and He loves you. And He's filling the universe. Now, when you're going to work on yourself to think positive, you will take the Creator with you to positive places of hope, of prayers, of holy desires and dreams coming true and miracles and wonders all over the place. But when you're judging yourself, you're forcing heaven to be part of those judgments. And you're forcing the kingship of heaven to function in those negative places. So we must set ourselves free. We must understand the power, the godly power, the staff of God that been given to us, the power of the free choice. And you should choose life. Choose to live your life, to live the life that you desire, to live life of inspiration, life of joy, life of growth, Life of satisfaction, inspiring life, life of pleasure from good things, not from sins. Sins will never going to make the person happy. Sins will always going to make the person feel guilty. But only because that we fell into those dark 
patterns of negative thoughts and bad behaviors that are coming from bad manners and bad habits. That's why today we think that also bad things like sins will make us happy. And we feel some kinds of pleasure from that. But that bitterness of shame and regret that comes immediately after the sin wakes us up to remind ourselves that our roots are coming from under the throne of honor, that we are actually a real holy soul and not a physical contaminated body by the contamination of the snake. We are a holy soul. Every single one of us is higher than an angel that made out of the fire of Hashem. Angel cannot stand in front of you when you're holding in levels of Kedusha, of purity. When you pray, angels are scared from you. When you're praying to the Creator, angel don't have a permission to raise your prayers to heaven. They must make those prayers fly by themselves because they cannot stand the heat of the Creator in the heights. The righteous ones, though, they're climbing up and down in the Jacob ladder with no fear, with complete faith, with a desiring heart to the truth, ready to admit in their lackings, to do tshuva and to come back from all of their failures and mistakes. And the Torah, the Bible, is revealing our eyes to understand that even our holy ancestors, they made mistakes in life and they regret and they did tshuva and we should follow their footsteps and just to do as much as we can. As much as you find that it's in the power of your hands to do, that's what you need to do. And if something is too much for you right now, so wait. Pray for that thing. Ask from the Creator to give you the merit to do more and to achieve more. And don't back off because of your failures. Because when you back off because of your failures, you're showing by that that you don't fully understand the kindness and the mercy and the love of the Creator to you. He loves you an unconditional love. And if Am Israel and all the real believers would have known the love of the Creator to His children, they would chase after Him like lions. If we would just understand how much He loves us, we would run after Him in the open deserts without drinking, without thinking, without eating, running and chasing purity and holiness because of the love that will give the power to those ones that feel it to even conquer death and to cancel death from the world. And in the end, when the redemption will take place, place in the world, death will disappear. All kinds of sicknesses and illnesses will disappear. Darkness will disappear. All sadnesses and bad attributes will melt and disappear like smoke in the wind will vanish and only good will exist and will stay for eternity. So we must connect ourselves to that light, the light of our goodness, of our souls, to be who that we are in the essence of our creation, to be those godly souls that we meant to be. For that we need to be aware to our inner truth, to who that we are, to the voice of our souls, that's who that we are. The evil inclination is telling you stories about yourself, criticizing you day and night, destroying your self-esteem, describing you as a horrible person, a useless person. But in the eyes of the Creator, that those are the eyes of truth, the eyes that He's giving to the righteous ones, you are a holy creation. You are an amazing, beloved human being. You are a child, an only child of the Creator, with a godly soul inside. And no one is like you. You are unique and beautiful and inspiring and talented 
and gifted and blessed in ways that words cannot describe. So just follow your inner belief and follow the Creator that you knew that He exists from your first days walking on earth and believe in Him and He will bless your souls. Amen. Can you hear that song? Thank you very much. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.